Hello. Uh, so here I um, I wanted to talk about uh, doing calculations and producing a formatted output on a uh, on a screen. Um, I know some of you have been struggling with this. Uh, this seems to be a perennial struggle getting formatted output to come out correctly. We've tried tab. I told you to play with tabs, and if that didn't work, try widening your formatting characters. Well, uh, I'm here to tell you that the best approach is to widen your formatting characters. In other words, um, we know that maybe your calculations won't go any more than, say, four characters before the decimal and maybe two after. Uh, but I doubled that number. I made it 8.2, so eight numbers before the decimal and two after the decimal. And notice the F here is for floating point. And notice you would expect to have a, a backslash T uh, indicating a tab separating the two fields but I have nothing I just I just right straight away put another field in 10.2 the thing is remember I, I told you that most of these numbers are gonna have four numbers before the decimal you're not gonna have ten numbers so already that's going to stick space in between um, uh, your two columns well it has another advantage which I'd like to show you I hit run and wait for it to compile and notice another another benefit all the decimals line up which is kind of a, a rare uh, a rare thing to see uh, note usually it's the uh, right rightmost digit or sorry the leftmost digit that lines up either that or the rightmost digit that le lines up but in this case it's the decimals that line up but actually I think it's lining up on the rightmost digit um, and that's one of the benefits of not having tabs uh, in that the um, Java seems to do the most sensible thing about formatting on its own and and throws all the all the output to the uh, rightmost part of the field and in this case it had the added benefit of lining up the decimals which is really cool that's a really good a really good benefit to have okay so um, that is uh, what I wanted to talk about about this uh, notice also that squaring a number should not be rocket science I could have said of course you know something like uh, math sorry math dot pow and have something put in there but I didn't. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine to have a number multiplied by itself. And since we're only squaring or at most cubing numbers, then why not just have i times i or i times i times i if necessary. And also notice uh, this double hardly needs casting. It will actually, um, the integer, the i is an integer here, but notice I actually place it in a variable which is of type double right and it's okay to put an integer into a variable that's of type double what it'll, what it'll do what Java will do is just fill the decimal with zeros so that basically the not before the decimal you'll get what would normally be the integer after the decimal you just get zeros and that's kind of what Java does so you don't have to cast but in the opposite direction casting is way more necessary uh, you would need to cast, for example, going from double into integer, going from the wider data type into the narrower data type. So integer, remember, has no decimals, meaning it has less than what a double would have. Uh, so we call that a narrow. We call the integer a narrower data type, and it would be necessary then to do casting. Well, we don't have to in this case because integer will fit inside a double, but double will not fit inside an integer. So if we had to do uh, if, if these i's were of type double and SQA was of type integer, we would have to cast these doubles as integer um, to, or otherwise risk crashing the program. And notice that in some contexts it, it already does. We ha we've seen it crash, for example, when we wanted to scan for an integer and we put it into a thing of type double. And when a person tries to put a number of type double, into a program as input the scan statement is only allowing integer and so the program crashes because of a type clash okay so that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about um, basically this is just a small example of 
um, this assignment down here for volume and surface area. Notice almost as many people have turned it in as owe me the assignment. Rock, paper, scissors, as you can see, uh, rock, paper, scissors, uh, 13 people still need to write it for me, and only three have turned it in. That's our most recent assignment. Uh, there's also a non-programming assignment uh, on your debugging practices. Uh, that's going to be, that's your um, reflection. And uh, you're going to talk to me about how you, how you program and how you debug and so on. I might act, you, now if you find it, uh, you might also want to look things up for that. Uh, I will be glad to provide you with references in case you find it difficult to find these references yourself and you can't seem to find anything. But really I want to know about your experiences. It's good to look up these references to compare your experiences versus say other people's experiences. But um, really we're, because I assume everyone is more or less starting uh, programming, um, I'm expecting really the kind of debugging to be of the most basic kind. So you're testing for borderline cases, you're testing for, you know, you're trying to see if you can make the program fail using valid input, not using crazy input, not by randomly pounding the keys on the keyboard, but using sensible input. What kind of sensible, valid input will crash your computer, or will not crash your computer, but crash your program? That's what we're after. Um, and how do you fix that? How do you fix that once once you encounter those sorts of problems? So that's reflections on my debugging process. I owe you tons of material. Uh, I am uh, close to being done the um, uh, thing on strings, the slideshow. Uh, as well, I also owe you material on arrays. Um, I don't know which to give you first, arrays or strings. I know a lot of you want to know about strings and there's a lot of built-in functions in strings that I'm sure we're kind of itching to use at this point and um, I think what I'll do is I'll just I'll give you the uh, strings one first and then maybe a few days later a couple of days later or so give you the one on um, uh, the one on um, um, uh, arrays right because uh, a string is just one kind of array, but it's more uh, Java treats it as an object. An array, an array can be an object, but arrays are already built into Java, and we're going to see how that's done. After that, we're going to talk about functions, functions and procedures. I know some of you have handed in to me um, completed stuff uh, using functions already uh, before I've even had a chance to teach it, but. Um, you need what you need to do if you do something that I haven't taught. Your the the pressure is on you to explain what a function is, what uh, how does it work? Because I haven't told you anything, and I want to see that you actually know this stuff. Okay, um, it's probably best not to do it until I cover it, and then you don't have to talk about it like that. Um, Okay, so uh, that's it for now. Um, I also want to talk about uh, the online environment uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, and apparently we're going to be spending the remainder of this month at home and doing this coursework. It's um, um, I've got a few things I want to say. It's not as intense as uh, some of the other courses that are being taught around the uh, around the school. Um, you're kind of lucky taking computer science and that a lot of your work can be done on a computer. In fact, all of it can be. So um, I, I look forward to hearing from you, uh, hearing your questions and your concerns and whatever. Also, please let me know if you do not have a computer of your own. Um, your homeroom teacher should have already approached you by now uh, asking you if you have a computer or not, or if you have a computer, you know, just for you, because you know, if you're sharing the same computer with your brothers and sisters, that's or or your mom and dad, it's really not good enough. You need you need one just for you, and uh, you don't want to be in a position where, you know, also you you also want to make sure you have um, you have an internet connection. Um, but the other, the other sorts of needs, uh, to be honest with you, are not really stringent. 
Uh, basically, at the very minimum, you should have a laptop. I would rather not do this on a tablet, right? Do it on a laptop or a desktop PC, right? If you have a dedicated desktop PC that's your own, you're in the best position uh, ever. But if uh, you're doing this from, say, a cell, you're not going to do this on a cell phone, guys. So if a cell phone is all you have, let me know. And uh, by the way, or let your homeroom teacher know, because really your homeroom teacher was supposed to be the one to survey you to make sure that you have your own computer. Well, all I can tell you is for the purposes of my course, computers are ab absolutely essential for computer science. That is the most uncontroversial statement a teacher has ever made on the planet, okay? I'm pretty sure you can make a case <laughs> if you don't have a computer and all you have is a cell phone to ask your homeroom teacher, uh, hey, I don't have a cell phone, um, or, or sorry, I don't have a cell I don't have a computer, can you please make sure that the school provides me with one? And uh, but you should have already been contacted for that, and your needs should have already been. You should have already stated whatever needs you had at the time. All right, um, that's it for now.